What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Now I swear I recorded an intro clip for this video, but for the life of me I can't find it. No matter, by now I fear you guys know the spiel anyways. So as some of you may know, I've been in the market for a pad foot compactor here for a little while, and I finally found an auction that had one not too far away. So I took a ride up, and sure enough it looked pretty decent, and ended up picking it up for $22,000 now that is more than I would like to spend on one however the things are just unobtainium right now as you guys all know the world is very crazy right now and uh, things are not what they used to be so taking what we can get here I do need the thing so beggars can't be choosers and here we are loading it up and bringing it home Tell you what, this sucker is a little bit loud. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that thing, huh? That's a pretty big compactor. What do you think, Roscoe? Huh? What do you think? You like my new compactor? Huh? We gonna build us a nice big shop with this thing? So most of you already know but the reason I've been in the market for one of these things is I need to put a whole bunch of fill across this area. Uh, I'm going to bring up that back pin right there uh, a little over six feet. So I need to uh, have something that really packs in the dirt good and this thing will do it. Now it is overkill for what we're doing. I could have gotten away with a smaller machine, but really the smaller machines are going for almost the same money. So why not get a big one? So this is a 1987, I believe the auctioneer told me. He said he called to a uh, called to a dealership and can got them to confirm. 1987. It's a BW213 PD. Now that PD basically just stands for pad foot, which is what kind of drum this is. These big feet uh, get better compaction when you're doing earth compacting. They're not necessarily very good for rock. But they do work but uh definitely the best thing going for dirt now there are people that call these sheep foot rollers and i guess you could use the terms interchangeably but really this is technically called a pad foot now a sheep foot looks a little different it kind of looks like this here now you can see how that's quite a bit different from these pads so this thing has a 150 horsepower, six cylinder Deutz diesel engine in it, which is an air-cooled diesel. We've done some work on the channel with these before. That's actually the same engine, but much smaller on my smooth drum tow behind compactor over there. We're gonna be getting back onto that project here, hopefully soon. I'm gonna need it as well to uh, do what I'm doing out here. But it seems like this unit runs really good. The only thing I can really see that's wrong with it uh, it's got a tire that's seen better days. This tire is really dry rotted, as you can tell. It's got all these cracks all through here. But honestly, that tire is going to be probably just fine for everything I'm going to do with this thing. Uh, it's not going to be a, that big a deal. But there's a few little things I need to address on it. Um, I don't think any of the gauges work, so I want to make sure we have the temp gauge and oil pressure gauge, if nothing else. Um, I don't know what all this mumbo jumbo is down here but we got an oil soaked rag hanging out from underneath the dash so i don't know what that's about but we'll try to address that the starter the starter does not like to engage sometimes you'll have to uh turn the key three or four times before it'll engage the engine and crank it over as soon as it cranks it over it's fine but so we'll have to probably just the starter solenoid we'll have to address that i think Although the guy, the guy that helped me uh, get it started today up there where I picked it up at said that he worked for the company that I bought this from for 11 years and this thing has been doing that for 11 years and it's always started. So yeah, uh, that's, I don't know, that says something. I don't know what. We got some oil leaks going on back here in the hydraulic department so we're going to have to check those out. 
maybe we can just tighten something up or there's an o-ring that needs replaced well they gave it to me with like three quarters of a tank of fuel which was mighty nice of them so happy about that well you didn't really think it'd be that easy did you come on it's me you're talking about nothing just works it's got to be kind of a little bit broken so I went to start this thing up yesterday to move it and you know it was a little chilly and the guy that I got it from told me that this thing is cold natured it doesn't like to start when it's cold so I'm cranking and cranking and it's just getting slower and slower and slower but I didn't crank it for so long that I thought I'd really be draining the batteries so uh, I ended up having to boost it to get it going so after I got it running I threw a voltmeter on the batteries and here the alternator is just not charging so that could be part of our problem here so I'm gonna try to remove this alternator here right now and you can tell it's not original because there's some sort of homebrew mounting going on there but I'm gonna try to remove the alternator take it down to the store have it tested Yep, I seen that coming. <sighs> well, we're back to the old nothing's ever easy. You know, it should be super easy to remove an alternator, but no. That bolt was seized in there bad. It just snapped right off. This one is also seized, and I'm having a heck of a time. I haven't gotten it to move yet either, so yeah. I won. Take note, people, on today, I was victorious. We're going to replace this bolt. Well, I took the old alternator down to the local parts store and they ran a test on it and said it's no bueno. So, $65 later, got me a new alternator, got new hardware, so we're not struggling to take that out. We're going to try to throw it on here and hope to the heavens that it charges the battery. Got her all bolted in and wired up here. Let's fire it up and hope this thing makes some power. This is another problem we need to address. The starter doesn't always engage.
Well, so the big dirt moving job here at the farm has turned into the uh, the Diesel Creek Proving Grounds, I guess you could say. This roller went down um, three quarters of the way through the second day, so we got some things to fix on it. But anyway, what happened is the fan belt for the Deutz Diesel here got shredded. So there's a belt runs off the crank down here and up to this big blower fan, which forces air across the engine and pushes it all out through these fins and that's what keeps the engine cool there is no radiator water pump nothing it's all air cooling on a Deutz diesel there's supposed to be a warning light on the dash that comes on if the thing overheats and it doesn't work apparently because this thing was cooking off oil and uh definitely overheated but alas no light came on by the time we saw the little bit of smoke from the oil cooking off, we come back and examined to find that the belt was indeed missing and no airflow. As, uh, as you guys can see, it looks like it's going to be a treat to get a new belt on this thing. Yeah. Fun times. So I'm kind of ashamed to show the... So I'm kind of ashamed to even show the, uh, the state of the filters and everything on this thing. You know, I ran it like this for two days with that in there, which isn't horrible. I've seen plenty worse, but you know, definitely needs blown out good. And I'm gonna replace the inner one because it looks, it looks like it's uh, seen cleaner times. While we got a couple days to do it, we're also gonna go ahead and do a complete service on this thing. So oil change, uh, fuel filters, and I was just looking down here at the sediment bowl. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's quite a bit of crap in there that could use cleaned out. So we'll uh, clean that out too while we're at it. I can't tell for sure yet, but I think that's a hydraulic filter that looks like it hasn't been changed since this thing was new. So I'm gonna try to spin that off of there, I guess, and replace it. All right, well, the next thing we're gonna worry about is the starter here. Um, the starter has gotten worse in the few times that I've even run this thing. When I picked it up from the people I bought it from, they said, oh yeah, the Bendix doesn't engage all the time, which I knew listening to them started up before the auction. But they said, it's been doing that since 2013 and never been a problem. Well, it's annoying, I'll tell you that. I couldn't have dealt with that since 2013. And then on top of it, um, it I think it's something's wrong with the actual starter because it doesn't turn over very fast. And I think the problem might be in the relay because I was cranking it the other day and it just started billowing smoke out of the relay and the connections are tight and everything. The wires didn't melt. It was coming out of the inside of the relay. So there's a problem in there. And then I can take 12 volts on a jumper cable and jump it directly onto the hot lead going into the starter motor and it'll crank over a lot faster. So we'll see what it costs. I might send it out, get it rebuilt, or I may just buy a new one. So you can see how that might get a little annoying. Oh yeah. Well, now that's out, we can have a little gander at it. And just looking at the Bendix, the teeth aren't torn up or anything, but the whole thing just seems pretty darn wishy-washy, worn out. Makes all kind of gritty, groany noises when you spin it. It's not good, so yeah. I think we're just gonna go ahead and replace this guy or get it rebuilt like I said the bad news is in here on the flywheel where the starter engages you can see those teeth have been incurring some damage from the crappy Bendix so that's a bummer but it doesn't look like it's a showstopper and it also seems like it's just in this one spot where the engine probably likes to stop these teeth down here don't seem so bad so another thing we can do to help starter performance before we install the new one or rebuilt one, we're gonna clean up all these connections really good. We're gonna make sure we have a good clean bare metal surface here. Hopefully this thing cranks over worlds faster than it does because I think that's the reason it's a little hard starting is just turns over too slow. 
All right, well, I just got back from the parts store with a box full of filters here and a new belt for the blower fan. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get all this stuff installed. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the blower fan here, but as you guys can tell, it's gonna be a lot of fun to fish a new belt onto this thing. It looks like we're gonna have to remove this rubber isolator coupler here. Well, at least it's coming loose. Good time for a ratcheting wrench. Of course, I didn't bring them. All right. There's three bolts. So now that's undone there. We have to take out one, two, three more bolts, and I think we can slide the coupling back and then hopefully get our belt on. I had nothing left of the original belt hardly to go off of, so I cut and trimmed a piece of old belt and wrapped it around this thing just to get an idea. But there's a variable of the tensioner pulley over here, so I kind of guessed really in the end. Probably could have gone with a 3 8 belt versus a half, but this should work anyways. Just gotta release the pulley tension. Maybe. Come on. And voila. It looks like that belt's gonna work. Hot diggity, back in business. Now it has another groove over here to have two belts on the uh, fan because the fan has two grooves as well. But the, uh, the tensioner pulley only has one groove, so. I don't know if that's not the original pulley uh, or what, but we can only run one at this time. Glad we got that buttoned up. As soon as I get a starter back, we'll be ready to go. Fresh off the internet here, we got us a new starter. Ah. That should do it right there. Oh yeah, this Bendix is much, much better than that old one. A lot tighter. Go ahead and throw this thing in. Nice thin layer of dielectric grease across this area will keep this thing from corroding up again in the future too and losing any contact. I don't really know that that's our problem, but if we fix it, it won't, definitely won't be a problem. That's great. Just drop that on the ground. That's probably fine. Yeah, I think that's actually in the manual. Yeah, they want you to drop the starter on the ground before you install it. That's it's called the drop test. I dropped it because I can't hardly reach on account of the tire being so tall. Ah, I need a stool.
There we go. Got a bolt started. We're good now. Moment of truth here. Is the starter going to engage things? Contact! Oh, it was perfect. It engaged so nicely. Heck yeah! Alright, let's give this starter a true test here. We'll fire this thing up and get this engine heated up so we can drain the oil. I also decided to start tearing into the electrical here and figure out the gremlins and the push button control here because they had the push button, they had the vibration control, what should have been in the handle here, rigged up into a toggle switch over there. Uh, maybe I should have left well enough alone because I think I kind of opened up a real bag of snakes here, but it is what it is. I got the diagrams and stuff. I picked up a manual, so. Hopefully we can sort all this mess out too. Anyway, here we go. Throttle. Contact. That starter works so much better than the old one. Anyway, let's uh, let this heat up. Change the oil. So the starter is working excellent. But we have a problem back here that I didn't notice. When I put this belt on, I had nothing left of the original belt. So I just kind of guessed at a length based on wrapping an old piece of other belt around there. And I was close, but apparently I need to be a little bit smaller because the belt is rubbing on this bracket here. So the belt ain't gonna last too long like that. So, it's a real bummer, but I need to pull that coupling back apart, take that belt back off, and get a smaller one so that we clear that bracket. Pretty good chance things get messy when you're unscrewing the hydraulic filter too, so I got plenty of pig mats down there to catch everything. Yep, see, good thing we had those or that would be all over the ground. I don't know what it is with bees and heavy equipment in the springtime, that every spring I fight bees just buzzing all around machines for whatever reason. They just keep going into all the little holes and exploring things. Like, there's no pollen in this thing for you. It's just oil and diesel. Leave it alone. On to more serious issues here. Look at this lack of uh, planning on an engineer's part. Now, I, before I go too hard on them, I do have reason to believe this engine is not original to this machine. I believe it is uh, remanufactured or something. But the oil drain plug projects straight on top of the pumpkin there. So it's just gonna make an absolute bath back here and make a mess. It's gonna be a disaster, there's no way around it. But I'm looking at it and I think the oil pan could have been turned 180, so that would have been ideal, but obviously somebody screwed the pooch on that deal. Well, this is what I came up with to try to catch this mess. It's a form of funnel 
duct tape to a magnet back there on the pumpkin. Hope it works. <laughs> that worked out way better than I expected. I really thought I was about to take a bath on that one. Redneck way saves the day. Teeny little bit of splattering off the screen on the oil pan, but man, that was it. Looking good. Probably one of the messiest oil changes I've ever had to deal with. Unreal. Well, the good news is it fell right in the top of the drain pan where I wanted it. I got that sucker on there. Fuel filters have an O-ring like this, some oil filters. You have to replace this too. But there wasn't one on here, so that's not good. Without this O-ring in here, it can bypass the filter. Trying to get a, I'm gonna try to slide the oil filter in here, and it's a pretty big filter, and it's pre-filled, of course, so it's kind of hard to get a grip on. And I got some pretty fair-sized hands, and it's still a challenge. That was a tough one. All right, well, we got all the filters changed and I just finished adding the oil through this uh, fantastic funnel setup I got going on here to add the oil because it's a bit of a goofy place to put the oil in. If it was one gallon jugs, it wouldn't be a problem. You could just stick a funnel in right here and uh, you could tilt the one gallon jugs up under the fender here but with the five gallon pails that I use, it's pretty darn impossible. But with the bigger pails that I use, it's pretty impossible without a bucket pump and I don't have one out here. So I found this piece of hose, cleaned it out good, stuck it on the end of the funnel, jammed her in there. Yep, just as I suspected, there was an air pocket in there. All right, I think we got fuel pressure. I think it's gonna run. Contact. There we go, right on the money.
turn our attention back to the air filter here. This is the old inner air filter, which you can see is pretty, uh, pretty crusty looking. So we got us a nice new one here. Guten type. As most of you know, I despise electrical work, although I am getting better at it. It's still very frustrating for me to uh, just try to film it and figure everything out at the same time. So basically, it would have been very boring anyways. It was just me uh, scratching my head, staring at a wiring schematic for several hours. But the wiring diagram doesn't even quite replicate what's actually on this machine. So. I made it work, I hooked everything up, and it's going to function, but there's no two-speed vibration. We just have full-on vibration. It hits as hard as it can. If it's vibrating, it's wide open. So that's fine with me. Um, a machine like this, you really don't ever want the slower speed. On smooth drums, I know that there's times when that's applicable, but on a pad foot, not really uh, something we need to worry about too much. Originally, when I bought this thing, the vibration control was rigged up into that toggle switch over there. I ripped out all their hack job wiring and put in my own hack job wiring and tidied this up a little bit, but I have the but I have the vibration control back in the forward backward handle where it belongs, so I don't know if you can as you guys can probably hear that solenoid activating. So, yeah. You don't have to be leaning over your shoulder and trying to flick that switch now. You just hit the button right where you're supposed to. So they had all the wires going up to this control were all gutted and not where they're supposed to be. So the way this system works is you're actually completing a ground circuit when you push the button. You're completing the ground which latches the relay over here. So that's a latching relay. And so you got to push the button to latch it, push it to unlatch it. And... I don't know what caused them to go the other route and just put a toggle switch on it, but I can tell you that they had the ground for that switch grounded right to this piece that moves back and forth, which doesn't work because it's on a plastic bushing. So there's nothing actually grounding out through this handle. So I had to relocate the ground over here to something that's actually grounded and uh, it worked. But I'm at the point right now where I'm just going to button this thing back up and get it ready because tomorrow I need this thing to be 100% ready to go. We're going to finish putting in this lift on the building pad and hopefully have this building pad completely finished. So the old bow mag is going to get a workout tomorrow. Well, all right. With all that taken care of, I think, uh, I think the old bow mag is about ready to roll. <laughs> get it? Because it, it's a roller and... It, Okay.
right, boys and girls. That be my new compactor here. There's still a few more things I may or may not do to it. I still don't think the vibration is hitting quite as hard as it should be. I'm pretty sure that the issue there is going to be the motor that drives the shaft inside the drum here. So I have to have this machine available to me for tomorrow. I, it has to be work ready, so I can't tear into it right now and get any more in-depth with it. Probably what's going to happen is after this building pad is done, I'm going to take the roller and uh, really go through it again, test out the flow rate on the pump and the bypass on the motor. And we're going to get to the bottom of that issue and make sure that this thing is hitting as hard as it's supposed to. Other than the vibration issues, I am happy with this machine. It does everything it's supposed to, starts, stops, vibrates, whatever. I don't know that I'll hang on to it long term. I, it's really a bit bigger than what I was looking for, but it suits the bill for right now. And in the future, if I find a better machine, I'll probably pick that up and let this one go. But anyways, that's all I got for now. If you like the video, don't forget, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out. It doesn't cost you guys anything. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so I can catch you on the next video. If you're looking for any Diesel Creek merch, don't forget, we got hats, t-shirts, stickers, everything over at the merch store. Link down in the description, dieselcreek.com. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.